Well, it's been said in some quarters that uncertainty over the petroleum industry bill continues to hold back international investment, while others suggest that progress is more visible in the promotion of the indigenous oil sector. Well, to review activities in the West African, in West African oil and gas space, I'm joined by Rulake Akinkube, the head of energy research at Ecobank Group. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Rulake. Well, let's start off with news out of Chevron on its intents to sell off some of its assets. Now, this isn't the first time, um, you know, this isn't the first rather we're seen in a while. Would you agree that this could be linked to the continued uncertainties with the petroleum industry bill? Although the company did say it is purely due to portfolio evaluation. To be fair, I think it's a combination of both factors. Uh, we've seen a, a number of IOCs divest out of the upstream market in Nigeria in recent times. Shell had a major divestment program uh, two years ago. Um, we also see, saw uh, Petrobras, the national oil company of Brazil, also seek to divest assets because all of these companies say they want to rationalize their portfolios. Uh, but there is an element of uncertainty which has impacted the, I, I guess one could say, the, the risk perception about upstream investment in Nigeria, particularly in the deep water. And I wouldn't be surprised if this current divestment by Chevron probably partly, if not totally, reflects, uh, reflects that. Uh, the truth is many of these companies also operate in different parts of the globe and have portfolios and have to take some very strategic decisions around which assets they retain and which they sell. And in an environment where there's already regulatory uncertainty, perhaps these assets are not considered an uh, immediate commercial priority for an IOC like Chevron. Oh, well, moving on now to forecasts you know, for oil production, according to Ecobank's report, we should be seeing a decline in crude oil production in June. Now, that's owing to a force majeure declared by Total. Now, in another twist, though, we hear that the force, uh, the force majeure will be lifted on June the 22nd. Do you still stick by this forecast? Well, um, you know, I, I would probably just provide some clarity on that. What we're, what we're expecting is a decline in the loading of crude oil cargoes for June, not necessarily production per se. Production has declined uh, to below 2 million barrels a day uh, due to a combination of factors. We have oil theft or illegal oil bunkering, which continues sometimes accounting for up to 20% a day of production outages. Uh, but we also have technical difficulties uh, in markets like Nigeria. And uh, Shell declared uh, a force measure on assets. Uh, Italy's ENI has also declared a force measure on assets. We've also s seen uh, force measures declared on gas assets as well. So this appears to be a general problem. It's a combination of maintenance uh, and oil theft in the region. It is quite worrying and the global energy trading community has started to put uh, a risk premium on crude oil that is coming from West Africa due to these trends we're seeing in countries like Nigeria. Oh, well, away from Nigeria, about a week ago, Tulo Oil received approval from the government of Ghana for the TEN oil fields development program expected to start in 2016. Now, as we know, this is estimated to hold over 400 million barrels of oil reserve. Now, I would like to get your medium to long term outlook for oil production in Ghana. Well, oil production in Ghana, um, I think I'm relatively bullish on that. And the reason is we already have production from the Jubilee oil field, which is just over 100,000 barrels a day, uh, with the potential coming on stream of this 10 development, uh, which uh, uh, Tolo is, is operating on. Uh, and production is expected to start in 2016. We could see another 80,000 barrels of crude oil a day added to the Ghanaian crude oil stream. Um, there are several other companies who are interested in the Ghana market at the moment. Uh, Tolo oil. Uh, is looking to divest uh, some of its 40% stake in that particular asset. And there is also already interest from uh, international oil companies. Uh, interestingly, Chevron is one of the potential companies that's interested, and Chevron is divesting away from Nigeria. But you also have national oil companies. You have Petroesi of South Africa. You have China, CNO, who are all interested. So Ghana is a very attractive market, and I think all of this is riding on the back of optimism following the Jubilee oil discovery in 2007 and, and the subsequent production increases that we've seen in the Ghana market. 
Oh, well, moving back down here to Nigeria, currently the Nigerian offshore has very little exploration activity compared to the likes of Angola, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. Now, what are the opportunities in Nigeria's offshore space? As many analysts say, it could be the last frontier in the West African transform margin. Yeah. I mean, look, with, with all this uncertainty we're seeing in the PIB, Nigeria is still one of the attractive uh, exploration and production uh, locations in emerging and frontier markets, particularly within the West African Gulf of Guinea region. And I think part of that ev is, is evident in the fact that only uh, about a year ago, Total brought on this new Usan oil field. And Nigeria still has an estimated 32 billion barrels of oil reserves, uh, which is still attractive uh, as an investment play, particularly for emerging market players. And when oil companies look at investment decisions, uh, regulatory uncertainties is are only one of several factors that they take into account when considering pumping money into uh, reserve plays globally so Nigeria is still attractive and particularly for the indigenous oil and gas market I think legislation we've seen over the last few years has actually enabled the environment for indigenous oil companies not just in exploration production particularly in the oil and gas service the off oil filled and gas filled service industry which is booming globally due to the relatively relatively buoyant global crude oil market so we're certainly going to see a lot more indigenous players come through uh, we're going to see national oil companies come through as well particularly those from the likes of Brazil India and China who are interested in West Africa and Nigeria and also n let's not forget the downstream part of the market as well which still has so much potential because of the sheer market size